We're at Jenkinson's Aquarium, but we're not here just to see animals. We're actually going to be leaving and going home with some. Come on. animals that need a home and we are taking the call and going out and getting these animals. This time the inquiry came through Jenkinson's Aquarium, which is a beautiful aquarium located in Point Pleasant, New Jersey, a town that a lot of us grew up going to because it is such a popular shore town. Beautiful beaches and boardwalk uh, and the aquarium is really awesome. So they have two turtles. Both came in on the same 2016 fish and wildlife confiscation came from somebody who was not supposed to have them. They've been living at the aquarium and now they've asked if we can take them on to live at our facility. Of course, we are going to do that and go get these animals. Uh, but what's really awesome too is we're gonna get to go inside the aquarium and check out some of the amazing animals and some of the amazing things that they're doing with them. We get started in here they're feeding the seals and uh, Doc Pollock who's actually one of the veterinarians that we work with is doing some health assessments on them while they feed them um, I believe they said the older one Lucy has been here since 1991 uh, and the younger one I didn't catch her name but both of them were deemed non-releasable by Fish and Wildlife and they live here now at the aquarium uh, they both have eyesight problems and some other issues Lucy I know they said was bit by a shark and also had a boat strike when they when she first came in in 1991 so it's really cool to see these animals having such a wonderful life here and getting the best care possible. Northern Diamondback Terrapin, one of the most famous species of our state, New Jersey, and also the only true native to the salt marsh when it comes to turtles of North America. This is the species that we do most of our conservation work. You know, Casey runs the Terrapin Conservation Initiative, and these are animals that for various reasons cannot go back to the wild, either through confiscation reasons or injury, and they're living the great life here at Jenkinson's Aquarium, and they look amazing. And you know what's nice about this setup that they have, this is a nice close look at just how big the females can get. Because if you remember, as we've shown you before, the males are much smaller. They don't need to be that big. They don't carry big clutches of eggs. Oscar and he might bear a similar resemblance to Otis for you guys. Can you tell his story a little bit? So this is Oscar and we got him in 2008 from um, someone who had him as a pet for about 10 years. Uh, and the stories we got were basically that Oscar would go up against the dog, oh. uh, up against the vacuum cleaner. So just a lot of personality and really into humans. We use him for a lot of education programs because he's always out of his shell and really checking you out, like almost viewing you pretty quickly. So, okay. Um, so he, he does live by himself though because he's not so nice to our other turtles. So Oscar is the one and only in, in his exhibit. Well, he, uh, he's got those fiery red eyes, which are typical of a male Eastern box turtle. He's got the concave plastron, the brighter orange skin. And he does, you look a little bit like Otis. You really, really do. Wondering why I'm wearing these cool yellow glasses? because we're looking at corals right here in blue lighting. We're gonna be able to see them clearer and be able to see all the different colors. This is a project that the Jenkinson's Aquarium is directly involved with here, which is really amazing. It really highlights some of the specific work they're doing to save marine life. This is the Florida Reef Track Rescue Project. Laura's gonna tell us a little bit about what they're doing with these amazing corals. 
Uh, so we were fortunate enough about three years ago to be a holding partner for the Florida Reef Rescue Project Corals. Um, AZA got involved with the state of Florida uh, trying to save some of these corals from stony tissue loss disease. As it's wiping through the Caribbean, it was decided to bring in some of these corals into human care uh, while the scientists figured out what was going out out in the wild. Here at Jenkinson's for the last three years we've been holding different types of corals from the Caribbean, specifically Florida. And our job basically is to keep these guys happy, healthy, and alive. And what's great is some of them are even reproducing and budding and gemming into other babies. And then as they do more work out in the, um, the wild, they'll find out more we can do. Some of the things that we make sure that we teach you guys on our channel is not just the importance of a specific animal or a subspecies or species of animal, but the importance of the habitat overall and all the different puzzle pieces that fit into a habitat. Now, it's no guess as to why reefs and the corals that live in them are so important to other sea life, but this is why aquariums and zoos, just like Jenkinson's, are so important, okay? Because there's something that's wiping through the Caribbean that's destroying these things. These are vital to marine life. We need our reef systems to be healthy, or as at least as healthy as we can get them. So make sure you support projects like this and your local facilities that might be doing work like this with such valuable marine life. So, so this is one of the animals we're going to be bringing home today. <laughs> this is a juvenile alligator snapping turtle and she's got where the carapace nips in, it's a spinal deformity and uh, she's also got a pigtail here. See how the tail is curled like that? A lot of times this happens in incubation, actually it's primarily incubation. Yeah, so, yeah. it's incubation but the animal has been doing well. Right? How long has she been here? She came in 2016. Okay. She's 75 grams, so I don't know what that puts her as far as age, but you know, pretty small. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, she's done well. Um, went off of food a little bit in June last year, yeah. and I just let the concerns of whether any of the spinal deformities were going to cause any issues. Yeah. So they did some uh, radiographs, and she got a CT scan okay. to kind of see what's happening on the inside. So what you're looking at down there might look like a sea turtle to you, uh, or a sea turtle with a pig nose, but that is actually a freshwater species of turtle native to New Guinea and also Australia, and that is the fly river turtle, also known as the pig nose turtle. They're very aggressive. They typically do not get along with any other members of their own kind, but he seems to be doing really well here in this pond communal setup here at Jenkinson's. Beautiful animal. Um, that's an adult male. You can see just how big they get. You can see the resemblance to a sea turtle in the form that they do have flipper-like appendages, but uh, they are in fact very different and they do not live in the ocean. of these spotted turtles. Now, just like any reptile, there's a whole lot of variation that goes on with them in terms of color and markings and even the size of the markings on it, but you don't see spotted turtles like this too often where the spots are plentiful and also huge. So take a look at Dotsie, our little resident nature room spotted turtle. She's got a lot of spots, but they're like little pin dots on her. But these guys have just like, 
mean, it looks like candy glued to their shell. Truly amazing. These are both females, and with spotted turtles, you can tell they're females usually just by looking at the face. The females have a more colorful face of peach, orange, or yellow, and also orange or yellow eyes, whereas the males have a really dark brown or black face and brown eyes. And then there's other ways to tell, too, but you can really see that these two girls in here are girls, and they're so beautiful, and they're full grown, four inches. That's typically it. Talk about a view, you can oversee the whole first floor of the aquarium from here and right there, right below us, is a Mata Mata turtle in that exhibit. Um, you guys have seen our Mata Mata, Jada, Jada the Mata. She's doing great, but uh, that looks like it's an almost full-sized individual, which is awesome. You can see just how much bigger Jada is gonna get. I'm in my, probably my favorite spot at the aquarium right now. They have a little area dedicated to the New Jersey Pine Barrens. Uh, that's my home. That's where I've worked the last two years in the field with reptiles and amphibians. And right here, we got a pine snake. But what's interesting is this is a Florida pine snake, the southern example of the famous northern pine snake, Pituophis melanolucus that we have up here in New Jersey, a snake that I have done almost two years of radio tracking with at this point. So some obvious differences there when you compare this guy or girl, not sure what sex it is, to uh, Piney Fred and Gigantia, our two big male pines that we have at home, which are the northern species, but um, super cool. So um, Ace is a Kemp's Releasy turtle. Um, she was found in 1995 in the Long Island Sound wow. uh, as a cold stun. Uh -huh. uh, her temperature was 34 degrees and her shell was damaged, um, frost burned. So they nursed her back to help catch her shell, but that's why her coloration is So she lived up in New York for a while at a rehab center, went to school, uh, went to university, but then ended up going to Mystic for a very short period of time. And then now went down to Florida to get evaluated. So, so I, I'm, I'm seeing like story. all the different like connections too with the different sure. facilities. We just took, uh, I heard you say uh, Mystic. We just took six common snapping turtles from Mystic Aquarium that were part of another confiscation. So it, it's you know everybody everybody works work together, together. They to work together to help these animals, which with, is amazing. Yeah, both with the rescue, the rehab, and then into the permanent home. Right. So, so she was deemed not releasable, uh, not because the shell condition, but because of her eye. So she is visually impaired. Uh, so she went down to Disney, Florida wanted to test one last time to make sure she truly was visually impaired. Okay. Uh, and they did, they tested her and she was, so she came to live with us uh, also, I believe, in 2008. 2008. <laughs> and you know, what, you know what's cool, being able to see an actual sea turtle here, we can compare that to the Fly River Turtle, so you guys can see the similarities there, but also just how different they are. So this is Rosie. She's a juvenile eastern box turtle. You guys have seen so many box turtles on our channel at this point. She came from the exact same confiscation that the alligator snapping turtle we're bringing home from Jenkinson's came from as well. Uh, same confiscation, possibly same individual that was not supposed to have these animals. She's got a little bit of a, a possible hypomelanistic thing going on here. On the shell you can see she has very little dark pigment when you compare her to other animals like Oscar who we saw earlier and also Otis or any of the other eastern box turtles we've shown you. Her skin's more typical, but that shell is really, really interesting. Really beautiful animal, and uh, she looks to be uh, pretty personable too. So we'll get her home and we'll get her set up too. There you go, another victim of a confiscation, but uh, Jenkinson's did great holding on to her all these years, and now she's gonna come live with us. Northern gray tree frog, Hyla versicolored. These frogs are very plentiful where we live in South Jersey and there's so many of them. And in the late spring, early summer, they're so loud, it is deafening outside at night. Poison dart frogs, amazing animals. The color is just unbelievable. And uh, if you remember the video we did on these, ours are still very small, but this gives you a good idea of how big they can get. They're typically about a two inch long frog. Okay, we are back from Jenkinson's with the turtles. Now before I go into any details concerning these animals, I do want to point out that anything that you see with both of these animals is not the fault of Jenkinson's. They have simply cared for these animals after they were confiscated, and any of these anomalies or issues that are going on with them came from their prior care. 
So we've got this poor little female alligator snapping turtle that unfortunately has this big dip in her back here and also a pig tail. We're unsure how long this animal will live, if she will get a full life. There's a lot of debate on the issues that this animal has and if it can live a full life, but nonetheless, we are gonna keep her comfortable and happy for however much time she has. We don't know what to name her though. She does not have a name. So why don't you guys leave your ideas in the comments as to uh, name ideas for her. And then what we'll do is we'll pick like the top four maybe and run a poll on our community page, which is at the top of our YouTube channel. And we'll pick the best name uh, based off votes on that poll. So start leaving your ideas in the comments as soon as this video is over. And then of course we have little Rosie, the Eastern box turtle. She was actually treated for dry skin as a result of being kept in too dry of an environment. So if you go back to last week's video where we talk about the relationship that box turtles have with water and the importance of it, well, here's another example of an animal that was raised too dry. But it does seem like she is healthy otherwise and as she grows, providing she's not stunted, which we can't tell yet, hopefully she will just get better and stronger with time. So there you go, that's Rosie the Eastern Box Turtle and the unnamed Alligator Snapping Turtle. Leave your ideas for names in the comments. Again, a massive thank you to Jenkinson's. You guys are incredible. If you are in New Jersey, I highly suggest that you take the trip over to Jenkinson's Aquarium to check out their unbelievable exhibits and the incredible work that they are doing for both marine life and even terrestrial reptiles.